What's going on guys, this is Necrostevo and it's finally time for Season 3 of the Indigo League of Legends. If you have not seen Seasons 1 or 2, pretty interesting rule set, even allowing Ubers in there um, in Season 2. So be sure to check those out, those are in the playlist attached to this video. In Season 3, the rules have changed, so of course, in the Indigo League of Legends, we're going to have 15 participants this time which is quite a lot. That means the battle is going to be lasting a lot longer as far as the season goes. And then on top of that, each person is allowed four OU Pokemon, four UU Pokemon, and four Pokemon in you and below. Now for the preseason, which is going to be these two weeks right after this video, we're allowed to have 15 Pokemon drafted. And then by the time that the, uh, the actual season starts, after those first two weeks, kind of just allowing you to test out things and and get a good feel for your team that you drafted. Then you have to whittle your team down to your 12 uh, Pokemon picks. So I'm just gonna go through my overall 15 Pokemon picks here and talk a little bit about each one. This won't be a very long video if I can help it. Um, but I just kinda wanna explain my thoughts on each Pokemon in the draft. Now in the draft, I was the 11th pick overall, which is not a terrible uh, draft pick. The draft was randomized because we had so many new people joining the league. And with the 11 pick comes, of course you are more likely to get sniped near the middle of the pack. But since I'm closer to the end of the snake draft, that means that I could adjust my draft to other players' choices a little bit more easily. Uh, my first pick for the draft was Venusaur. Yes, we are finally going back to our um, our mascot and my favorite Pokemon of all time. And you guys have seen me play with Venusaur before. You've seen how versatile it can be. Specifically in league format, it does lend a sort of tankiness to the team without s suffering from any offensive options. Uh, of course, Venusaur can also run interesting sets with Chlorophyll um, if I decide not to Mega Evolve it, which of course in the Indigo League of Legends you do not have to Mega Evolve your Pokemon, and in fact you can draft more than one Pokemon that can Mega Evolve. The catch is, is that when you draft a Pokemon it has to be at the tier that the Mega is at, so of course Venusaur counts as an OU Pokemon, and even regular Venusaur is an OU, so it doesn't matter. Now with my second Pokemon, I did want to pick up my Fairy very early on. Um, with this many people drafting, I wanted an OU Fairy. Uh, and in the first round, actually, right before it even got back to me, Florgis was already gone. So, um, and Clefable left in the, f in the, f it was the first pick for the, f the fourth seed of team. So, already two Pokemon fairy types are gone. I went with Togekiss. I've used Togekiss before in the LBA. Another very versatile fit, and it goes very well with Venusaur. Uh, Togekiss being weak to electric, steel, ice. Um, these are all things that Venusaur takes on pretty well. So I like that fitting. Now from there, I kind of branch out into other Pokemon that I haven't used much on my channel or in any league before. My third pick overall, and I'm sticking with OU, I really wanted to get all my OU Pokemon out of the way. Not out of the way, but get them submitted so that I could see what other teams were doing a little bit better. My third pick was Crawdont. With Crawdont, he gives my team an offensive presence, or this first three here, that the first two don't even touch, really. Uh, Cronon also gives some nice priority to the team, which means that other teams do have to prepare for Cronon to get off a hit, even if he is slower. And Cronon also can go Bandit, he can use Dragon Dance, uh, Substitute. Uh, he has several different things that he can do, and just solid dark coverage since I couldn't get Weavile, which the core of Venusaur took a kiss Weavile on every single team that I use in the LBA was so good. But of course, Weavile went in the um, second pick for someone before I got back to me on the Snake Draft. I really like this core. Uh, when I was just looking at these three, Venusaur, Togekiss, and Crawdont, I really like their matchup overall with some of the things that have been drafted. Now, that being said, the problem with Crawdont is that he is rather frail. He has terrible typing as far as the defensive side goes. He basically only has resistances the things that he doesn't, he still doesn't really want to get hit to. And also the weakness to U-turn doesn't help. Weakness to Volt Switch doesn't help. He basically comes in after something else dies. So I needed to have an offensive presence that didn't require that, that could be threatening um, just by itself or or at the beginning of the battle. And looking at my first two choices, Venusaur and Togekiss, 
Charizard Y was actually my fourth pick. Now, Mac, probably one of our biggest rivals in this league, chose Charizard X. And so me choosing Charizard Y, uh, he doesn't have Kingdra this time. He doesn't, uh, not Kingdra, he doesn't have um, Cure in Black and he doesn't have Mega Mawile. So we're going to try our chance at uh, beating him in the league this time with Charizard Y. Now, of course, Charizard Y has some nice synergy with Venusaur, not only forcing my opponent to play a guessing game as to which one that I will bring Mega, but also Charizard Y has immediately offensive, immediate offensive pressure that he can offer that my opponents have to prepare for. If you don't have a fire resist, Charizard Y hits something so hard, it doesn't matter if they resist it, he can still 2-hit KO them. Um, of course, Charizard Y can run a mixed set with Earthquake for things like um, Heatran that don't really mind the fire type attacks. And Solar Beam offers some nice coverage there too. Uh, Charizard Y, of course, in pairing with Crawdon, kind of forces my opponent again to try to figure out what I'm going to bring because Crawdon's water type attacks like Aqua Jet or Crab Hammer suffer from the sun that Charizard Y brings. I could also not bring Mega Charizard Y, I could bring a regular Solar Power Charizard. And Solar Power Charizard in the Sun hits much harder than Charizard Y, if that gives you any indication of his power level. My fifth pick overall, I really needed a spinner to go alongside with Charizard Y, and to a lesser extent Togekiss, especially when I use Baton Pass Togekiss, which is very fun. Uh, my fifth pick is Fortress, and Fortress gives me a much needed Rapid Spinner, which when I play in these leagues, I do tend to forego a Rapid Spinner for more um, offensive options. But I wanted to try kind of going back to my 4th and 5th gen roots of Fortress and Venusaur together. Now normally when it, back then I, when I ran Fortress and Venusaur together, it was just to have hazard control without relying on Skarmory because I didn't like Skarmory at the time. But now that Venusaur is no longer weak per se to fire type attacks, that makes this core even better. Uh, Fortress can come in on those psychic and um, to a lesser extent the flying type attacks aimed at Venusaur and for the most part soak them up. Uh, Fortress also gets a nice slow volt switch allowing me to pivot out from things. I can set up every type of entry hazard with it. And I get a chance to explode which isn't too great in league format but it might be unpredictable. Or I could use gyro ball. Uh, so a few options with Fortress there which I really like. And mainly the fact that he's a wall that can pivot out kind of like Electros. I really like that. Now for my sixth pick I did kind of dip completely out of UU for this pick. Uh, my sixth pick is Lipard. Lipard I've actually seen used in league format to great success. Uh, for example, in the Pokemon Premier League, one of my opponents in that, the Herdier Bremen, actually used a Lipard and I've, I saw her use everything from Copycat to Encore. Just uh, really annoying options overall. Furthermore, Lipard can set up weather for my team, uh, whether it needs to be sun, or the fact that there are four other teams all running different types of weather. Lipar can at least negate that weather before it goes down. Uh, just general team support is nice. And dark typing without being saddled with Crawdon's terrible base speed. Um, still have the frailness there with the dark type, but that's okay because Lipar's not there to take hits. It's there for really team support or general unpredictiveness. Or I guess unpredictability but would be the right way, but since I just, just got off work, I'm a little bit tired. We're gonna go with unpredictiveness. That's a word now, apparently. Uh, the pick after that, going back to UU, is Dragalge. I already had Venusaur as my poison type. I lacked a dragon type. I had the fairy type, need a dragon. I admit that I waited a little bit late to get my dragon. At this point, my first choices, Salamence and Hydragon, were both taken already. They weren't so much sniped as I said, I want Salamence, then I want uh, Hydreigon, and if I can't get either of those, then I want Dragalge, then if I can't get him, I want Tyrantrum. So I still got a Pokemon that I wanted. My team's not particularly weak to Psychic, um, between two immunities and one resistance. And of course, Togekiss doesn't really care about Psychic moves. So I really like Dragalge on this team. His ability to kind of have that same presence as Charizard and in in just like here, if you get hit by this, it's going to hurt. I like that for my team overall. Furthermore, the nice part is I already have some of the, the Dragalge I would use bread. So that kind of lightens the load on breeding things. That was another thing I took into account with this league on season three. I didn't want to have to do a ton of breeding. Um, heading into the holiday seasons, my hours at work are picking up. So I want to make sure I can balance Pokemon 
with my professional life appropriately. Uh, the next pick was actually a suggestion from my uh, friend Aquaclauncher on Twitter. Uh, Iden suggested Embor. I was actually thinking of Infernape, who went two, two rounds earlier. Embor actually makes a lot of sense for this team. He is a much needed fighting stab type attack to my team, uh, which I just needed in coverage generally. He doesn't miss out on priority because he can use Sucker Punch. Granted, I would prefer Mock Punch, but that's okay. Uh, and furthermore, with the Scarf or just Flare Blitz in the Sun with Reckless, we're getting into that, let's just run some things over with pure power. And as you saw in my final battle in the Pokemon Premier League, just going where Brute Force works sometimes if your opponent is running a little bit more bulky of a team. Uh, furthermore, having Embor forces my opponent to prepare for something that hits that hard the same way that Charizard Y does. And they can't just throw a bulky water at it because Embor can learn Wild Charge. Wild Charge is also boosted by Reckless, so some nice power behind that pig. I like it. Um, after that, notice that I didn't really have a good bird spam check, and Pinsir and um, Talonflame have both been drafted pretty early on. I actually went with one of my old favorites, Rhyperior, probably in my top 20 Pokemon easily. Rhyperior not only gives me some, some really good sun synergy, because the sun of course gets rid of somewhat, it mitigates his weakness to water, but he also can come in on those rock type attacks. I can bring him in, I had I now have an immunity to electric types, which before that, uh, Togekiss and Charizard didn't really have a good switch for that. And also, I have something else to set up Stealth Rocks, which frees up a moveset on Fortress. Uh, Rhyperior can also run interesting such as his Choice Band and Rock Polish. That can be generally unpredictable as well. So another little bit of versatility there. I don't mind that at this point I only had drafted two Pokemon that can go Mega. Uh, in the second league of Indigo League of Legends, I drafted five Pokemon I think that could go Mega. So it's going to be interesting to play this way instead. Now after Rhyperior, my next pick was Rotom who I used in the LBA to pretty good effect, actually. I think a lot of people sleep on the regular Rotom form, uh, bringing some pretty nice immunities to the team with a ground immunity, a normal immunity, and a fighting immunity with a nice speed tier of 91. You guys have seen me use Rotom before, and uh, it's going to be back doing a lot of those same things with the same synergy with Venusaur and Togekiss. I really like Baton Pass and Full Switch with Rotom. Pretty fun there, and now I get to throw Fortress into the mix, so I think I'm going to enjoy that. Uh, it also gives me some nice Will-O-Wisp support, which I didn't have up until now, so you want to be able to throw status conditions around at whim. Uh, at this point in the draft, I kind of took a look at what types I had not covered, and at this point I did not have any Psychic, um, I didn't have any... I didn't have any Psychic or Bug or Ice, I believe, at that point in the draft. And so my next pick was Sigilyph, which is another Pokemon that I've seen used in draft to pretty good effect, especially in the, um, I think the Pokemon Premier League is where I saw that one too. Not in my division, but I was watching someone else's battle. Uh, I did use Sigilyph a fair bit in 5th gen, so I'm very familiar with it, at least back then. Um, it's not as good as it was in 5th gen, just because of not only team preview, but the, the prevalence of just Pokemon that can kind of overpower it. But it is something that your opponent does have to prepare for. Being able to Psycho Shift things over such as Burn or Poison, alongside being able to set up with um, Calm Mind, or if you want to go the defensive route and go with Cosmic Power, it can do both of those. And having a nice Stab Psychic Attack with actually a pretty nice speed is something that Sigilyph fits in well with here. It does compound my weaknesses with that flying type, but I think that that's okay because I won't likely be bringing it alongside too many things that have the same typing as it. Uh, at this, After I drafted Sigilyph, I began to look at are there any other Megas that I can draft that'll fit in with my overall team plan? And it basically came down to Agron and um, Ampharos. And Agron is so nice with this team. Uh, Agron, I could fit it in with several Pokemon here. Uh, it just basically becomes a nice blocker for so many Pokemon that might try to set up or at the very least just try to be overwhelming with their power and it's hard for them to one hit KO Aggron. Uh, in the Pokemon Premier League, I got completely ruffle stomped by an Aggron, so why not bring some of that power over to my side of the field? 
Now, Aggron can run boosting sets. I really don't like trying to run a boosting set with Aggron. I'd rather it just stay in and be fat. Um, but it doesn't really sacrifice its attack to do so. It has a pretty nice base attack stat. Can run a plethora of support moves. It can phase. It can set up stealth rocks. Um, so I do like Aggron for this team. And if I go Mega, that's a lot harder for my opponent to break through. Uh, if my opponent has a bunch of fighting types, probably don't want to bring uh, Aggron. But it is nice to have that option available. And then speaking of fighting types, I noticed on my team that I didn't really have anything that could take on a fighting type. Venusaur comes in on fighting types relatively well, but fighting types also just have the ability to kind of wall break, which I wanted to be prepared for. Gothitelle was my next pick, which of course OU is. Uh, Shadow Attack is an OU ability, so this is giving me five OU Pokemon at this point. But I will be able to cut that down after the preseason if I need to. Um, Gothitelle is just a nice little check to thing. I was kind of waffling between Gothitelle and Wobbuffet. Um, but Gothitelle is just good to force your opponent to consider, hey, I might be trapped in there. Uh, of course, not against ghost types. But maybe they'll bring Shed Shell or something weird as opposed to a more useful item just because they don't want to be trapped in by Gothitelle. Now my last two picks here for 14 and 15, I chose Crustle and Aurorus. So two rock types. Um, this is my first bug type, Crustle, in the league draft this time. Normally I pick up a bug type pretty on, especially for U-turn spam. I saw a lot of success with Caesar last season, but I went with Crustle just because he's a little bit more unpredictable as far as if you want to run Shell Smash or just set up entry hazards, and he has Sturdy, which is really, really nice for insurance. Uh, gets some nice stab options there, and he gets Earthquake for coverage. Something else that my opponent generally has to prepare for, and if nothing else, I can run a defensive set that can kind of fit in on things and be uh, annoying, generally. Uh, Aurorus was a little bit more of a wild card pick for me. With Aurorus, it does generally take advantage, like one of, someone else in the league drafted Obama Snow. Um, with Aurorus, I could run Snow Warning on it and change the weather and then completely throw my opponent off. Therefore, also something like Sigilyph works well with Aurorus. So it, it's kind of just a weird pick in the last slot. I needed some stab ice moves in there. I can go Choice Scarf Aurorus, Rock Polish with Blizzard, or go Hyper Voice and get the Refrigerate ability. There, there are different things that I can do there with Aurorus. Uh, plus, I just haven't seen Aurorus in League Play at all. So why not bring it and see how it does? So that is going to be the team for Season 3 of the Indigo League of Legends for the Venus Venusaur. Preseason starts this week with, um, I believe, actually, my first battle is against uh, DRB. So we're going to be having that pretty soon there. If I don't talk to you all before Thanksgiving, please have a happy Thanksgiving for those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving. And if you don't, hopefully you just get a day off, uh, depending on where you live. But anyways, though, thank you for watching this draft analysis video here. I just wanted to explain some of my picks and let me know who you think will be the MVP on the Venus Venusaur out of all those Pokemon that I drafted, because that is a lot. So we have a lot to, to go through here with the preseason, but I'm pretty excited for it. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Bye now.